can you find ceaseless chivalry, the cradle of Christianity, and cool caverns? Here's a clue. Today we'll explore an island in the Mediterranean. Welcome to Laura McKenzie's Traveler. Hi, I'm Laura McKenzie, and today I'm gonna let you guess where we are by giving you a couple of hints. Okay, you ready? We are on an island in the Mediterranean, just south of Italy, and the island has an incredible medieval history. Can you guess? Tick tock, tick tock. Did you guess Sicily? Well, that would be wrong. How about Capri? No, that would be wrong too. Here's another hint. Think of knights in shining armor. That's right, we are on the island of Malta, an incredible vacation destination that's totally underrated, and I can't wait to show it to you. Talk about your hot properties, Malta is an island that civilizations have been coveting and conquering for centuries. Its location, smack dab in the middle of the trade routes for Asia, Africa, and Europe, has made this place a mecca for world powers. Since 800 BC, the island has changed hands from one conqueror to another, and over these centuries it's been controlled by the Phoenicians, the Carthaginians, the Romans, the Byzantine Empire, the Arabs, the Normans, the Knights of St. John, the French, the British. Whew, that's a lot of rulers. Is there nobody left? So what is it that's driven everyone to want Malta so badly? While Malta is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been, I immediately fell in love with its incredible beaches, gorgeous water, amazing historical sites, great local food, beautiful handicrafts, and unique culture. All that and a great location. It's no wonder people have been trying to get a piece of Malta for centuries. In fact, even today, smart travelers can't get enough of this amazing island. With all these attractions, how did the Maltese manage to save the integrity of the island? Well, with a trained militia, of course. All right, the guard isn't really on active duty anymore, but you can still see how they prepared themselves to meet invading conquerors at Fort St. Elmo. Although visitors today invade with cameras, not weapons. What is the reenactment we're seeing today? The reenactment in Guardia represents a military uh, performance drill, which used to take place quite regularly in the time of the Knights of St. John. The reenactment recalls the inspection by the Grand Bailiff, that is the high official of the order in charge of military fortifications. It is this inspection to ensure that the fort and the garrison manning the fort would be in a high state of alertness. Now, how do we know who the Grand Bailiff is? Well, he would be a very conspicuous person as he comes in here with uh, a lot of pomp and circumstance. <laughs> And the best part of the show? What you're gonna see isn't just entertainment, it's history. It's the story of the Knights of St. John and an island that had to defend itself and the rest of the known world against an evil empire. No, seriously, it may sound like a movie, but that's the historical truth. In 1568, the Knights of St. John, which consisted of soldiers from all over the world who vowed to defend Malta, defeated the Ottoman Empire and thus prevented a massive invasion of Europe. This battle changed the history of the world as we know it today. And ever since, Malta has been known as the nation that saved Europe. But evidence of this isn't confined to Fort St. Elmo alone. It's visible throughout the island. You know, I'm a sucker for any place with a fort, and Malta has seven walled cities. I mean, that is just incredible. Well, this is Burgu, which was renamed Vittorioso after the 1565 siege. And this place you have to come to. You'll see the Maritime Museum, the Inquisitor's Palace Museum, the Malta at War Museum, and St. Lawrence Church. Definitely worth it. War museums? Burgu's got them. And there's a lot more to see at the other fortified cities. My favorite of the walled cities is Emdina because to me it looks just like a Hollywood set. Now this is the main gate. In fact, the gate here was built in the 1700s. But my favorite part is over here. You can see the original gate. You can see the outline of the square. 
You can just imagine the drawbridge coming down over the moat. In fact, I asked my guide, oh, so this is where the moat was? And he goes, no, that's a ditch. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. Of course, if Imdina seems like a Hollywood set, maybe that's because it sometimes is. Malta is often used as a backdrop in many Hollywood productions. But we're not here to see movie making. It's history we're after, and this town has plenty of it. Emdina was the capital of Malta from Roman times up until the 1500s when the capital moved to Valletta. And here, just like in the old days, it's a walking city. You're gonna have to hoof it. Wandering around the old city of Emdina is half the fun. There are so many cool things to see and experience. You know, this is always fun to do, but it's not that comfortable. Okay, you can get me out now. Hey, you guys, I'm done over here. Oh, come on, that's not funny. Here's a tip. If your flight is suddenly canceled, call the airline to reschedule. Don't stand in line. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. The Knights of St. John created the city of Valletta after the siege of 1568. It's one of the very first modern cities, and the best way to appreciate it is to hit the ground running, or strolling if you prefer. Don't be afraid to walk around and get a little bit lost. I mean, it's perfectly safe and it's amazing some of the sights you're gonna see. For example, Malta's famous for its doorways, the pretty colors, and especially the door knockers. Bronze in all different shapes, these are fish but the varieties are endless. But it's not just the door knockers that are worth a look. Take time to enjoy some of the other unique features here, such as the limestone facades that decorate all the buildings, or architectural touches like wooden balconies and religious plaques. Look at this. Everywhere you look, it's a picture. If you're impressed by the detail that they put into their houses, then wait till you see the Grand Master's Palace. The palace was built to reflect the high status of the Grand Master, and that stateliness is still there today. Visiting the palace is like diving into a treasure trove of artistry and weaponry. From its lavish gardens to its gorgeous furnishings, guests are left with an impression of sophistication and elegance. The palace was not only a refined residence and administrative building, it was also the Knight's Armory. And unlike many reproductions you may have seen around the world, these are all real, totally authentic. Look, I found him, my knight in shining armor. <sighs> Isn't he cute? But the knights built more than just an impressive palace and capital city. They also created one of the grandest cathedrals I've ever been in. I was overwhelmed by St. John's. Everywhere you look, you're confronted by opulence and beauty. From the embellished high altar to the superb marble memorial slabs, amazing. And then that incredible ceiling. As if all this craftsmanship isn't enough, turn the corner and you'll discover Caravaggio's masterpiece, the beheading of St. John. The cathedral is definitely an amazing place to see and one of the highlights of Valletta. But there's a lot more to see on the island of Malta, including a simpler way of life outside the city in the more rural terrain of the island. Now you could rent a car or hitch a ride on a bus, but that's no way to see the countryside. No, we need a vehicle that can take us up the highest peaks and on the sandiest of beaches. So, that means we're gonna tour Malta in a Jeep. Vince, tell me about the Jeep tours that you can take here in Malta. Where do you go and what do you get to see? Well, the Jeep tours take you where the big buses won't take you. The back roads, scenic spots, the scenery, unusual for most people because ours is so compact. Lots of hills and the stone walls, 
Now, how adventurous can we get? I mean, you can probably custom tailor some of these tours, but can you go off-road, or I mean, is there any limitation to, to what you can do? Yes and no. There are many programs which are set, where the route is always prepared beforehand. You could, of course, design your own custom tour. Off-road, well, Malta is a very small place, so every scrap of land belongs to someone. You cannot just simply open a gate and drive in. Some of the best adventures you can have in Malta is exploring some of its religious and historical sites. From St. Paul's Catacombs to my favorite, the Temple of Hagarim, an ancient site that wasn't excavated until 1839, but dates back to 3600 BC, around the same age as the Egyptian pyramids. Wow, and getting there by Jeep is half the fun. But we can't tool around the countryside all day. I'm looking to plunder Malta's riches, and the smaller villages are where to find the spoils. Each township has its own specialty, from locally produced wines to unique handicrafts, all ripe for the taking, or should I say bargaining. This is Marsa Schlock, which means the Southeast Harbor. And here's where you want to come on Sunday mornings, because here is where you're going to find the biggest market in Malta. Now, while you're here, you're going to want to look at all the beautiful colored boats in the harbor. And here's a little bit of trivia. On every boat is this symbol to ward off the evil eye. It's actually not evil. It's more of a lucky charm. And I'm going to need some of that good fortune as I head to the market in search of some local color. Of course, in a fishing village that includes lots of seafood. Look at this. Octopus, yeah? Squid. Now you'll see some fish here you've never seen before. But be prepared, this part of the market isn't for the weak of heart. Oh, I can't watch. Can't watch. So where's that vegetable market again? Oh, look at this little guy. Come here. Come here. Oh, he's cute. That's fresh. Here's a tip. Pack a list of generic name prescriptions and keep necessities in your carry-on. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. Getting out on the water is definitely a good idea because Malta has treasures offshore that you can't get to from the land. And one that you have to see is the jewel of Malta, the Blue Grotto. I have to concede, few places in the world are as impressive as the coastline of Malta. The best time of the day to go to the Blue Grotto is in the morning, when the waters are calm and the sun's light hits it in just the right spot to make it sparkle. It's also the best time of the day to avoid the crowds that flock to this destination. These are naturally occurring caves that were formed by years of erosion, and the turquoise water is what gives it its name. It's absolutely breathtaking. Well, after a rough day of pillaging the market and invading the sites, I'm in the mood for a little rest and relaxation. And I found a place that reflects the beauty and tranquility of this newly discovered island. The Weston Dragonara Resort is in the perfect spot. Its beauty and tranquility are in complete harmony with the island. First of all, it is in the best location on the island. It is situated on a peninsula. Um, it is over 74,000 square meters of land. And it has all the facilities you can imagine for a resort. But it's not just the location of the Dragonara that makes it so extraordinary. As soon as you enter the doors, you're surrounded by all the luxury and sophistication of a world-class five-star hotel. Their attentive and friendly staff handles every detail, including seamless check-in, business concerns from computers to conference rooms. Of course, I can't truly relax until I've seen my room, and these rooms are really something special. If you're looking for even more space, then look no further than the Dragonara's 29 luxury suites located right at the water's edge. These suites are like apartments, complete with a fully equipped kitchen and a large living area with plasma screen TVs and DVD players. 
Hey, what's more relaxing than strolling out on the balcony overlooking the Mediterranean Sea? Of course, I sometimes prefer to do my soaking under the sun, and that's when I head down to one of the swimming areas. Well, we have two very large pools. One is a seawater pool, and the other one is a freshwater pool. We have two beach lidos. One is near the freshwater pool, and the other one is near the seawater pool. Private beach, now we're talking. Though I find the beach absolutely heavenly, I understand that for others, a great spa is what it's all about. And here, the fitness center's huge. The gym offers numerous classes, plus cardiovascular and weightlifting machines all overlooking the sea. After working out all that tension, I do get a little hungry, so I guess I have to choose between eight restaurants and bars. That's just too many options. Quadros is the elegant dining by the sea option, famous for its seafood. So now I've seen the sights, relaxed at the resort, ate a fabulous Maltese meal, maybe I'll head next door to the casino. Wish me luck. But I don't want to stay out too late because tomorrow I'm setting my sights on Camino and Gozo, Malta's sister islands. Camino is a tiny island that's practically uninhabited except for a few residents at the local hotel. But it wasn't long ago that this island was a haven for pirates. Today though, it's the perfect place to go and commune with nature. And one of the most beautiful spots to do that is at the Blue Lagoon. First the Blue Grotto, now the Blue Lagoon. In the summer, this area can get crowded with sunbathers and swimmers, so try to go either early in the morning or later in the evening when most of the tour groups are gone. Nature's fun and all, but one of the joys of Malta is discovery, so I'm catching the ferry for the other Maltese island, Gozo. It's about a half an hour over to Gozo, and it's something you definitely have to do. Full speed ahead. And the ride itself is fun. There's plenty of things to do on board, like check out the coastline or get a bite to eat. Hey, there's even stuff for the kids to do. Do you have any change? Once you land in Gozo, you'll realize that it's very similar to its sister island. Like Malta, it has walled cities, ancient ruins, a spectacular shoreline, local handicrafts, and a peaceful island atmosphere. It's just a little more compact, which makes it the perfect place to go for a day trip. So if Gozo offers some of the same things you can find on Malta, why go? Well, according to the Guinness Book of World Records, Gigantia is the oldest freestanding structure in the world. I mean, Egypt has nothing on this place. Parts of this temple are a thousand years older than the pyramids. That's incredible. The name Gigantia means giantess, which I think is quite fitting because the site is actually home to two temples that span over 130 feet. The largest megalithic temples found on the Maltese Islands and still holding on to some mystical qualities. And to make it even more eerie, right now, we're having a partial solar eclipse. Do -do 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 -do. Even in ancient times, the Maltese Islands were delivering sights that exhilarated its visitors beyond their expectations. Maybe that's why Malta welcomes a lot of visitors every year and it's encouraging more and more to come. Here's a must-pack item, an extension cord. Outlets overseas are never in the bathroom. Laura McKenzie's Traveler will be right back. This is an incredible vacation destination. I mean, it has it all. A Mediterranean climate, great beaches, resorts and hotels, good shopping and restaurants, and the history. I mean, what more could you want? All this, and it's a nonstop flight from over a half a dozen places around Europe. 
Ah, you want to come here now, don't you? I knew it. I hope you enjoyed seeing it with me and that you'll join me again next time from another terrific place somewhere else around the world. From Malta, I'm Laura McKenzie. Bye-bye.